Welcome back to the In the Garage podcast. I am your host, Mikey. I have three beautiful co-hosts with me today. I have Ryan, I have Jason, and I have Demarcus with us today. I thought it was Jimmy's brother. And today we're going to be talking about, in my opinion, in all, my, of, our, all, 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 all of our opinions, opinions the, my, our favorite comedy movie of all time came out in 2007. Greatest comedy movie. I think it's the greatest comedy movie. I think it's the best. Whatever you want to call it, whatever <laughs> adjective you want to put in front of it, it's the best. 2007 movie, super bad. Starring Jonah Hill. Starring Jonah Hill. Michael Cera. Michael Cera. And what the hell is Vogel's name? Oh, um, my God. I can't think of it. What? Why can't I think I'll of look it? Up, right but uh, it, it was written by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Seth Rogen also plays a cop in the movie. All right, along with Bill Hader. Nobody cares about the logistics. No one cares who directed it. What we, 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 we got to set what, it up. What the we fans gotta, care we gotta about give the is why this is the greatest comedy movie of all time. And, I'm about to, and we're about to spit it down. You, right you now. going in first? Oh, dude. Sam's Fogel's going in like, first? I can't think of it. Christopher Mintz plot set. Yes, yes, it is. Oh, it is him. Yes, right. yes. Yeah, how did we forget? How do we forget an easy name like that? Yeah. But basically, here's the thing with with comedy movies. They're not supposed to be really good. They're supposed to be really funny. They're not supposed to be movies of the year. But this movie, it hits home with, with I think, high school kids. It really does. There's just something about it. it just... Even, any high school, whether you, whether you are a... High school kid from 2014, 2021, 2007, 1974. It doesn't matter. Maybe it's not just 1974. The, just everything in this but, movie, <laughs> like, can just relate to you. But you it's can, relatable. Yes. You can relate to these three guys who go on a magical journey just one night. An incredible journey. Real simple plot. So it'd be three guys trying to get to a party. You know? Well, and well, they're trying, well, what, yeah. are they, what are they trying to do with this party? They're trying to, you know. Hook get, up, get get some ladies. Hook up with some females and uh-huh. get some booze to the party. That's the whole plot. Is that that's, these that's three it. guys who aren't the most popular kids in school? You might com- just... you might com- uh, compare them to the band Weezer. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Who? They're they're very Weezer. They're very Weezer. They're so they're not Weezer. The, they're, I wouldn't say they're like outcasts because I don't think they're. No. no they're, they're just. Not. They're just uh, not they're just part average of the kids. Popular, Weezer. Yeah. They're just normal people that. Just got invited to a very popular girls' party, and they asked them to bring alcohol. And the guy really likes this girl, so he's going to do everything to get her this alcohol to the party. And the journey they go on to get the alcohol there is it's great. Really incredible. But what, Fantastic. But what so I think funny. This movie, why I think this movie hits with high school kids so well is the comedy in it. Oh. Like, dude, there's just so many funny moments and scenes that aren't like... Really like over the top stupid funny. There's this movie is so sarcastic. It's just it's, yeah. it's, it's how it's, they talk. No, but they're making fun of like, like kids like like no, I don't, yeah. They're making fun of high school kids. Wow, like this movie is super sarcastic. It's very like, all the humor is like believable. Like it's like something high school kids would yeah, say. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, like you it's have not over the top dumb. Like you have like comedies like I feel like nowadays that are about like high school kids and they talk like they're like no like no high school kid talks. They talk like they're, and they act like. Complete like, idiots. Like no, yeah. I think that's the part of this movie that I like so much is that like, the 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 uh, the lines in the movie are so are so they're, like relatable in a way where like they're all something I feel like we would say. We would say that's what I'm and saying. Like not like nowadays where some movies are like right. almost like over over scripted or yeah. overacted to uh, the point it's like it's not it's not a like normal conversation. You can really. I feel like you can really like relate. Not like. Even like just relate to these dudes. Like everyone's like at a girl. They really, or they like, try to be cool. Or, like, exactly. And these everyone's guys, been in this position. And they like do a great job in this movie of making you want like want to be like you know what I kind of want to be a weird kid like those dudes. Kind of want to be more Weezer. I kind of want to be. I I 100% agree. Like they like I watched that movie and I'm like Michael Sierra's character even though he's like a like a loser is like sick. Listen, I I relate to Jonah Hill in this movie. He's so funny. So, so funny. funny. Like, that, like... It's so quotable. It's that funny. is me. That's another thing. It is so quotable. The movie's so quotable. Oh, my gosh. So many just great, great, like, one-liners. It's, just, it's one of those movies where, you, like, it doesn't matter how many times you watch it, it's still going to be funny. There's, yes. Yeah, there's always, like, a new, like, joke that you'll pick up on that you'll laugh yeah. at. Yes. I just think the funniest part of this whole movie is the underlying, like, the underlying, like, 
like fact that all the characters like for some reason the movies think that Michael Sierra's ca- character is, is, <laughs> is Jimmy's is brother. Jimmy's brother, the great singer. And it like climaxes <laughs> at the end of the movie and he has to sing for them and it's and they're all like cracked. It's like the it's like the it's like the all like the running joke through the whole movie. Yeah, and Jimmy's He's like I don't think I Jimmy. You know Jimmy you kinda look like his brother. But like every character is like Wait, yeah, I know you. Every How do I know you? You look familiar. Other than his two friends, every character right. thinks he's Jimmy's brother. And he has the voice of an angel. And, and he, he has to he, sing We it. never find out who Jimmy is either. No. He's just Wait, Jimmy's from brother. Wasn't he like, my, my brother just drove all the way from Scottsdale to listen. Yeah. <laughs> to listen to you sing. The voice of an angel. Dude, that's so good. And why I love Superbad 2 is this is a movie that really, like, this movie really, like, Got off, um, like really put Michael Cera and uh, Jonah Hill yes. on the map because obviously, especially Jonah Hill recently in the last ten years or Jonah so. Jonah Hill's been huge. He's right? been in some huge movies. He's been directing too. He, right, he's been in. He's he directed his own movie. He directed mid nineties, yeah, and mid-90s. I think he's directing another one like right now. That's what I'm saying. He Which mid nineties is fantastic. Bro. Jonah Hill really got his huge break because of this movie. Yeah, I think it really shaped him. Now the one guy that. Maybe I just don't know enough about the actors. Maybe I could be saying some false information here. But I don't think Fogel, the actor, Christopher... Mintz, Plaz. Yeah, yeah, he's been in a few... Like, I don't think he really... He was in, no, he never really blew up like Joe. Like, yeah. like Michael yeah. Sierra. He's been John in, Hill like, in like commercials and stuff. Yeah, and he's in a lot of like the like the low like the low the brow, like comedy movies. Like He was in Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass he was in... Um, yeah. Role models with like Paul Rudd. Gotcha. The Fogel is such an iconic character. Oh my God! He still, oh, he still McLovin? Show. McLovin. Yeah. McLovin. Like it's you just cannot, that is not, that, like, you can't go to one college in the in America and someone doesn't have the big the McLovin flag. The and McLovin that, flag. And that's what we're getting at with this movie. This is why this is the greatest comedy movie of all time. It is so every gener last probably like three generations of high school kids. Can all probably say they've seen Superbad and they love it. Like I, I've never heard anybody say no. they don't love this movie. Exactly, it's such a great yeah. movie. And like the thing is, like, it's dumb at times. Like it's like, but it's supposed. But to But it's not like it's not like I'm trying to think of a movie like. I don't know. Like take like scary movie for instance, where there's no like no intelligent humor at all. It's yeah. all just like stupid. But I feel like a lot of times like Superbad has like that good humor where it's not just like where the jokes are like good and actually like make sense. And like that, you know. And even though it is kind of like dumb comedy movie, like I would say, I would say the the second half of the movie is more trying to be a dumb comedy than the first. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think. Well, once they leave the school, I feel like yeah. they kind of not like run out of ideas, but there's a lot less you could do with the movie. Yeah, well, but uh, there's like a middle part where I wouldn't say it stalls, but like from the time where they leave the school to like them like probably like getting chased. Yeah, like the house party. Yeah, the yeah. house party, like the final act. There's some stuff in there. I mean, there's some very funny and iconic. Like, there's the part where Jonah Hill gets hit by the car. I mean, there's so many <laughs> funny. <laughs> there's there's the, there's a Pinocchio. There's, there's so Pinocchio. many funny moments. <laughs> I forgot think, what Jonah Hill gets I, hit by the I, car. I, I, I still think the best line in the movie is when he's like, "I'll cut off your face, put it over mine, and go get it myself." And he's like, and he's like, "What do you say?" Oh, he's like, "You don't have the steady hand or the technology to pull off a procedure like that." It's so funny. Because, <laughs> like, like Fogel, he's such a dork. It's so funny. Dude, the best part of uh, One of my favorite lines in that movie is, One name? One name? What are you, Seal? Uh, that, like, that is... That, between that or Mohammed. That, that scene where they where he shows... Oh, my God. Jonah Hill, Michael Cera, the... The ID. The ID. That is might be the most iconic scene. He's like, he's like you're McLovin, the 25-year-old organ donor from Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I am McLovin. <laughs> It's the best. It's just like the picture on the ID. It's so, it's it's so just, good. Dude, I feel like it's such like a 2000s movie. The, like the whole like aesthetic. The music. Like where's the, my car? Oh, his car gets towed. The, like the whole like fashion and like just no, how. No, I love like, that. I movie. love it. I like think the, it, I and it. I think it genuinely is one. I mean, it's hard to say any movie's the greatest in anything, but I honestly think if you look at the top comedy movies of all time, you have to put this one up there just for the fact of how it relates to high school kids. Every high school kid loves this movie. Oh, There's 100%. no doubt. I mean, it's it has to be one of my. Keep going. Oh, I'm sorry. It has it, like it's if I had to pick. Like, you know how they do that thing where sometimes, like, if you go to a stranded island, yeah, then you had to bring 
what, three movies? Or you had yeah, to bring yeah, one yeah. movie. If I had to bring one movie, I'm bringing Super Bad. I'm sorry. It just, after that movie, it just makes, like, I don't know. It's just so, my favorite, makes me feel better. My favorite honestly. two comedy movies of all time, not even close, or actually my three favorite, would be Anchorman 2. Oh, my God. This movie and School of Rock. But none of the, but, but School of Rock and, and Anchorman 2 or they're just trying to be stupid, funny movies. Like, this movie, I feel like, is genuinely trying to relate to an audience. No, yeah, and it oh, works. And it works. Because I, I feel, feel like it's so good. Seth Rogen and oh, Evan Goldberg. I forgot about him. He's in that. Yeah, they wrote the movie. And, like, I, they wrote it. I think they do a great job at just really, like, sitting down and be like, okay, what were we like in high school? What was everything like in high school? I know. And, I, and it works. You know, like, a lot of times, like, writers and directors writing a high school movie, they like lose touch with their audience, but I think they don't at all. Uh, no, that's what for makes sure it. That's no. what makes it so good. And I think a lot of that has to do with the influence of, of like a Michael Cera and a Jonah Hill in this movie. Because obviously, like these Jonah Hills went on to direct his own movies, high school movies. Yeah. Like, see, they're they're in context of what kids l- are like in yeah. like, like that like that type of culture that the movie's going for. I I think it's a great now movie. like most and most of these like. I wouldn't, I mean, I personally don't think it's like a stupid comedy. No, yeah. You know what I mean? But I feel like people, people have that perception, right? Mm -hmm. And most of those stupid comedies, like places that like rate movies like IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes don't give it like a high score because it's not really a good movie. It's just supposed to be like, this got 88%. On Rotten well, yeah, because, that's how you know how good because the most movie comedy is, how good a because most is. comedy movies don't do something that this movie does very well and that is relate to an audience and yes. if, if this movie captures that like that demographic age of like probably like high early like middle school high school kids and then even kids if you were like if you were in high school you, you should watch to it if yeah, if you were in, in high school after this movie was made and watched it even maybe a little bit before but every yeah. high school kid should watch this movie at least once I get I think that for sure and like. Yeah. Even like, like I just now since like we're talking about it, I'm thinking of like parts of the movie that like no one talks about that I find so funny. Like when they're on, we're in the middle of the soccer field and they're talking, and that kid yells at Michael Cera, and Jonah Hill's like, "Why don't you go pee your pants again, Zach?" And he was like, "That was eight years ago." And Jonah Hill's like, "We never forget or something." Like it's like little moments in the movie like it's, that. It's the it's writing. So no, it's, it's the writing. The, the writing's just they're, incredible. Writing's they're amazing. casual conversation. They're, they don't try to be. They're they're just casual conversating, and it's funny. It feels exactly. it, it, the writing's it amazing, real. and the acting is just so natural. It's so that's natural. That's what I was gonna say. That's, that's what, what makes it feels. Like I'm not wa- like I'm just watching like someone hold a camera and recording like pick these people at high school. These three friends who are just exactly. like that's genuinely how we talk to each other. It doesn't feel like it's so good. Like it doesn't feel like it's like that's what I was trying to say earlier. It doesn't feel like it's a movie or like it's being like overacted. It just feels fluent and normal. All time, all time, great man. I think it's, I think it's, I think, just based on the how funny it is, how relatable it is. And just how good the writing is and everything, I think it's easily the number one comedy of all time. I, I think we all agree on that. I'd put it up there against anything. Me too. I would put it any up, movie. I would put it up there against. Now, like I said, this it's going for a direct, a direct. That's what I, I was just gonna. Bring if you were point. to show this to, I mean, anybody that watches this movie would think it's funny. But if like, say, my grandma were to watch it for the first time, she might not appreciate it or think it's as funny as someone like a high school kid who watches. No, it. yeah. It's definitely directed towards that lower audience. And I had this, me and my dad were having this, like, this, or this argument because I told him, I said, he, we were talking about movies or whatever, and I was like, I told him my favorite comedy movie was super bad. And he was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And I was like, you have, have you even watched? He's like, well, he's like, no. I was like, you have to sit down and watch this. And he watched it, and like, he thought it was funny, but he didn't think it was like, best comedy. Best ever. comedy ever. But that's because that, that's not the audience that they're trying to target. You know what I mean? So I, I, I think his favorite, like you said, his favorite no, comedy I, was Anchorman I, I think, 2, but that's like a demographic that they're trying mm-hmm. to think. I think the final point that you could wrap this whole segment and thing about with is Superbad is a movie that's really directed towards a younger audience, and they've really done a great job of relating to that audience, and that's why I, to a lot of people and to us, it's the most successful and best su- comedy movie Probably of all time, in my opinion. Well said, brother. I think that about wraps up in the garage episode, you know. Episode five. Episode five. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. See you next week.